Hello guys and welcome to my first episode of my learning discord.js tutorial guide series, however you want to call it. And basically in this tutorial, as the title states, we're going to be learning discord.js, um, but to make a discord bot. But the thing is, before we do any of that, we're going to simply need to install a couple of prerequisites. First off, you're going to need a code editor. You don't really need one. You could do it in Notepad, but that's just stupid, and please don't do it in Notepad. Um, a good code editor that I could recommend is VS Code, Visual Studio Code. And if you... because Visual Studio, Studio Code is really, like, meant for Node.js, and in, in, if you don't know, Node.js is a big part of the of discord.js and other modules of that kind so we're just gonna go through the basic installation process of any application alright once it gets to the end we can just launch visual studio code and uh... i'll leave all of these links in the description for you guys to go click it i'ma just pin it to my taskbar and move it towards here i already have something open uh... but i mean that doesn't matter too much for what we're doing um, let me just close this. So after you've installed uh, your code editor of choice, you could also use Atom if you don't like Visual Studio Code for some reason. Then you're gonna need to install Node.js. Please install the latest version. It has uh, all of the new features of JavaScript, including async, await, and many other important things that if you don't have, it, th there's no point in not having them, basically. You should just get the newest version here. And th not to mention, this tutorial is for Windows, but basically everything is going to be the same no matter what operating system you're on. Even the installation, VS Code has a simple installation for Mac, Node.js also has a simple installation for Mac. And if you get any errors during installation process, during like installing any of these, before like asking anyone, make sure to Google it. I feel like not enough people know that they can do that, but yeah, feel free to do that. Um, and yeah, it's installing Node.js now. Alright, so it says Node.js has been successfully installed. So once it's done that, we can just, uh, type, press Windows key R and type in CMD to open our command prompt. And from here, you can just type Node-V. And as you can see, it says we're on version 8.5.0. So we know that the installation was successful. And so, um, this one... Nodemon is great for everything you're going to need basically for no Node.js in the future because if you're making a program instead of having to go to the console press control C to stop the bot press the up arrow key press enter every single time you want to restart the bot while you're in the development stage you can use Nodemon so that once you save your file it automatically restarts the bot for you so let's just go ahead and open up the command prompt again and our npm version may be outdated considering we just installed it so to update your npm and you should know this for fu for future use you just want to run npm i dash g npm that basically updates it and then we'll just wait a bit for it to finish and now if we just run that npm install dash g node mon again and just wait a bit so now that we have basically everything set up from this point what i like to do is um I like to install Fira code. It, it's a really nice font that just makes your code look nicer and it joins arrow functions and stuff. To install it, you just want to go to the Fira code GitHub. Um, I think in the releases section, they have the code. So if you just download this, and then you just want to go into the TTF folder and basically just drag all of these and right click and install them. And then once they're installed, you just want to go back uh, into your code editor and go here. And here in the instructions section, you just want to, inside of VS Code, because this is how to do it for VS Code, you want to hit Control and the comma key. It'll open up the settings. And where you see all of the, these two settings, basically, for your font family, you're just going to want to set it to Fira Code, like this. And for your font ligatures, you're going to set it to true, just like it already is. And so now, let's say we go to our code. As you can see here, our uh, arrow function. So, like, these two got joined together. 
and then if you do uh, this it'll join that together if you do this it'll join that together and so on now for the final part of this tutorial it's just gonna be simply how to use NPM if you don't know NPM doesn't stand for anything it, it, it isn't an acronym it isn't anything it doesn't stand for node package manager they stated specifically that NPM doesn't stand for anything right and they even make jokes about it. If you go to npmjs.com, which is where all the packages are held, in here, oh god, how did I get so unlucky for that one to show up? But basically, every time you click it, it comes up with a new, uh, a new, um, a new acronym for it. There's like a full list of it somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. If we just keep spamming through it, yeah, npm expansions, and it's just a ton of people made a ton of acronyms for it. It's completely a joke, okay? There is a literally no meaning to NPM. That's I just want to get that out of the way. Don't say it stands for Node Package Manager, because it doesn't! Alright? And basically what NPM is, it's a Node Package Manager. It lets you install a, from the, de the default registry is here at npmjs.com. If for some magical reason, if for some magical reason you don't have the registry already set to uh, npm npmjs, then you just wanna set it to registry.npmjs.org, like, like so, right? And then it'll set it to the default. That's the default registry, and basically here is where all the files are from. So, for example, if we go to discord.js. And inside of here, this is the actual pa discord.js package. Inside of here is where this is the readme. And here is the GitHub to see all of the code that it contains. If we go to client, for example, this is the code for client, right? I'm sure you don't, won't, won't understand most of this if you're a new coder, I, I, I guess I could say. Oh, look, it's about to hit 100 releases. But yeah. And basically, let's say, uh, because we have discord.js, let's go to the registry and go to discord.js. It gives us all the info for the package. The, when version 1 was created in 2015, um, what is this? Freaking, frick, frick, uh, 10th month, 8th day to the 10th month, I don't know. <laughs> Here's the maintainers, and here, there we go, the tarball. That's what you, that's what happens when you install Discord.js. It fetches this link and then downloads it locally to your folder inside of a Node Modules folder. If you have a dash s flag, so um, and finally, the one thing you want to do every single time you create a new bot. So let's go to our desktop for example. Let's create a new folder. Let's name it um my first Discord bot because we're gay. Um right and now let's go now let's open the folder we're just gonna close this out if you shift right click inside of the folder you're gonna see uh, open command windows here so like hold shift and right click in the white space here it'll say open command window here now you just wanna here you, as you can see it, this matches our uh, directory that we're in because we opened the command prompt from here um, I don't know if that right click sh open command windows here is in older versions if it's not just type CMD into the search bar or not the search bar but the directory bar whatever you want to call it and basically we're just gonna want to create two files we're gonna want to create an app.js file oh yeah this is um, not to mention if you don't already if you have this if you have this unchecked please check it um, knowing that your file ends in a .js is very important and with, or I like to name my bot app.js but you can literally na name it bot.js, server.js, whatever you want to name it and inside of npm it, it makes a great command it's called npm init uh, you can just basically enter through everything oops author dim license MIT whatever and here we've created a package.json file and there's no open with code option so I just I guess we're just gonna drag it into here and as you can see it creates this I, I usually get rid of this I accidentally put the keyword here you would yours would probably look like this if you followed my mine I usually just delete the scripts thing because it's use, useless for the most part 
And then you have your package.json. The reason why you need a package.json is because if you install discord.js, it's going to go through the installation process. Once it gets to the end, it's going to say here dependencies discord.js. And you might say, like, why do I need to? I It's already installed regardless of whether I have dependencies in there. But the thing is, let's say you want to move your bot to a server and it has, like, like um, I don't know, 20 dependencies on it, for example. And yes, it's possible. It's uh, after making a bot for so much, you might end up with, like, 300 million dependencies just because of how n Node works. But what's the thing is that y you're not going to want to go through all the files look what it, dependency it requires you're just going to want to put all of them in there so once you move it to another computer you can just type npmi it looks inside of the package.json file for all the dependencies and installs it from there and oh yeah one thing to mention is these npm warn warns as long as they're not an npm error there's n you should never worry about them like here i got no description uh, f and no repository we'll just make it make it private uh, so if we run that command again we're not gonna get a warn for my first discord bot but you're all there's a good chance you're basically always gonna get a warn for discord.js unless you literally install all of these dependencies right here um, I'm just gonna quickly go through what these do buffer util earl pack and uws and libsodium wrappers and sodium are all basically for web sockets and speeding them up. Node Opus and Opus Script are for your music bot. And to read up more on them, if you go to the actual Discord JS page, which is discord.js.org, which where you can find every single thing you're ever gonna need. If you go to the documentation and you go to you scroll down a little bit, here, optional packages. Um, as you can see, it's gonna give say list all the packages here, and yeah, this is for uh, WebSocket, uh, WebSocket, packet, WebSocket, WebSocket. This is for faster voice packets, I guess. This is for WebSocket, and for inside of installation, it says with voice support, Node Opus. So these two are basically for. Um, for voice support if you're ever gonna like make your bot play voice which i'm not get, i'm probably not gonna get into in this series but i might so i hope you have a decent enough understanding of node node.js currently oh yeah and if you go back to the folder you'll see, you're gonna see it created a node modules folder with every single package that discord js requires like if we go into here we go to the package.json as you can see this is the package.json for discord.js just like ours but with a ton more stuff if we go down to dependencies as you can see these are just pure dependencies with all that stuff if we go to the actual dependencies which i missed for some reason here it is it needs these five dependencies just to get it to work and as you can see, it's installed long, prism media, snack fetch, tweet NACL, and WS. And then you might ask, like, why did it install Ultron and why did it install async limiter? That's because one of these packages, maybe long, who knows? If we go into this, we go to dependencies. Dependencies. Oh, okay, this package doesn't require any dependencies. Let's go into a. Uh, I know snack fetch doesn't require any. If we go into tweet NACL, we go to dependencies. What? Did I misspell dependencies? Wait. Depend. What? It's right there. Oh, I have it, um, case sensitive. Um, this. I guess this one also doesn't require any dependencies. Sorry, I, I haven't looked through these files much. If we go to this, and we go to dependencies, there we go. D dependencies, it requires safe buffer, async limiter, and Ultron, which are the three other ones that were installed. 
And basically that's how it works. They're just linking to each other all of these packages. And they're and to find packages, they're all just right here on npmjs.com. But yeah guys, that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one where we're actually going to get into discord.js and javascript and everything like that. Peace.